In 1965, it was proved that black holes result from the death of supermassive stars, which after exhausting all their fuel, collapse under the enormity of their own gravity, leaving a black hole as their final state. At the center of a black hole, the curvature of space and time is so great, that even general relativity itself breaks down. This is known as the singularity. It is the boundary of our spacetime, the place where time stops. Perhaps it connects us to other universes, or to something else entirely, we do not know. From the outside, the only properties of a black hole that we can discern are its mass, charge, and state of rotation. Two static chargeless black holes with the same mass are indistinguishable to us. This is a statement that black holes have no hair. Or perhaps we should say, black holes have only three hairs, one for each of their three properties. Something that particularly puzzled me was what happens to objects that are thrown into a black hole. Where do they go? In 1974, I realized that the only possibility was that something must come out of black holes too. Black holes constantly emit radiation. In other words, they cannot in fact be truly black. But this in turn led to more puzzles and questions. As matter falls into the black hole, when radiation is emitted, the identity of the infalling particles appears to be lost, a concept that contradicts the fundamentals of quantum mechanics. This apparent loss of information is known as the black hole information paradox. This paradox has troubled scientists for the last 40 years and remains one of the biggest unsolved problems in theoretical physics. In the last few years, there has been renewed interest in this paradox among the scientific community as new discoveries have been made about the physics of gravity in the infrared, or low-energy regime. Central to these recent breakthroughs is the understanding of the underlying symmetries of the spacetime. In flat spacetime, that is, with no gravity, it is possible to identify certain symmetries, quantities which leave the interval between two events invariant. For example, if one were to measure a distance of 20 kilometers between two points, then if both of these points were shifted by 5 kilometers in the same direction, if the measurement was taken along the same path, which is now also shifted by 5 kilometers, one would still conclude that they are 20 kilometers apart. This is a type of translation, a displacement in space or time. Similarly, we may perform a rotation or a boost, a transformation linking two uniformly moving objects. This set of actions are called symmetries, and together make up what is known as the Poincaré group, the symmetry group of flat spacetime of special relativity. As soon as gravity is included, and curvature is introduced into the spacetime, these transformations no longer hold as symmetries. Near a black hole, there is so much mass, and the spacetime is so violently distorted, that it is very difficult to identify any symmetries at all. However, as we move further away from a black hole, the curvature gets less and less, until infinitely far away, we have approximately recovered flat spacetime. This region is known as asymptotically flat space. It might be expected that in this region, we would again find the Poincaré group as the set of symmetries. However, a remarkable discovery made by a group of scientists, called Bondi, Van der Berg, Metzner, and Sachs, in the 1960s, 
revealed that there is actually an infinite collection of extra symmetries. These additional symmetries of asymptotically flat space are called supertranslations, and the full group of symmetries is called the BMS group. Along with every one of these symmetries, it is possible to identify a conservation law of the spacetime and a corresponding conserved quantity. For example, the symmetry of displacement in time can be identified with the conservation of energy. The symmetry of displacement in space corresponds to the conservation of momentum, and the symmetry of rotation gives us the conservation of angular momentum. The infinite number of supertranslations of asymptotically flat spacetime leads us to the conclusion that there must be infinitely many more conservation laws. Indeed, these conservation laws equate the net incoming energy at any angle to the net outgoing energy at the opposite angle. In this case, the conserved quantity is known as supertranslation charge. It is these conservation laws that have given extraordinary and unexpected insight into processes in gravitational theories. In the last year, together with my collaborators Malcolm Perry and Andy Strominger, I have been working on using the BMS group and its associated conserved quantities to find a possible resolution to the information paradox. We know that the three discernible properties of black holes are their mass, charge, and angular momentum. It is possible that black holes also carry supertranslation charge. So perhaps black holes have a lot more to them than we first thought. They are not bald, or with only three hairs, but actually have a very large amount of supertranslation hair. This supertranslation hair might encode some of the information about what is inside the black hole. It is likely that these supertranslation charges do not contain all of the information, but the rest might be accounted for by additional conserved quantities due to an extra collection of symmetries called superrotations, which are as yet not well understood. If this is right, and all the information about a black hole can be understood in terms of its hairs, then perhaps there is no loss of information. Quantum mechanics continues to hold, and information is stored on the surface of the black hole. We have not yet proven that this is true, the information paradox remains unresolved but I am optimistic that we are moving towards a solution. Watch this space.